What's going on? Y'all see this guy with my shoulder? His name is Darnell Scott. He's 37. Now, he's going to stab his brother-in-law over 25 times, and they're going to say disemboweling him. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that is. Is that cutting out his intestines or something? However, this is a threat. This is insane. For one, you can't beat up a 50-year-old man. You're 37 years old. Come on, Chicago. Y'all need to learn how to fight. You got to pick up a weapon to fight a 50-year-old man. That's a, what's wrong with these kids today. They too sissified like they say on Friday. You can't pick up your hands and fight, then you don't need to be out there. I'm sorry. So go to school. Straight up. Because you need to get up off the streets if you can't fight. If you need to pick up a gun. If you need to pick up a knife. Stay in school. If you don't know how to fight, stay in school. Take a karate class. You don't need to pick up a weapon to fight. Come on, man. Anyway, he's only going to get aggravated assault. I'm going to bring y'all to fight, man. This is bananas. And it shows a vicious fight on board a CTA bus. Two men here trading blows, one of them pulling out a knife and stabbing the other several times. That victim is in serious condition at Stroger Hospital, and that's where Eyewitness News reporter Kate Kogirin is live for us tonight. Kate? Well, Alan, that 50-year-old man is still recovering. As for the man who stabbed him, police say tonight he is in custody. The cell phone video captured by a CTA passenger and sent to the I-team shows a fight between a 37 and 50-year-old man. You see the men on the back of the bus struggling with one another as passengers stand back and watch. It's really crazy. Crazy. The crime needs to stop. Chicago police say the fight ended with a 50-year-old stabbed several times in the head, leg, arm, and back. It happened around 6 o'clock last night near 63rd Street in Harvard. Tonight, CTA riders say the transit agency needs to do more to keep other passengers safe. This scary out here. It's so much going on. It's a lot going on. It's not safe to be just walking or standing right here. The CTA told ABC7 in a statement, CTA bus operators are trained to handle emergency situations like these. And in this incident, the operator immediately notified our control center, which alerted Chicago Fire and Chicago Police. You think you're safely, but you're not. Getting on and off. It's sad, really sad. Uh, it is unclear what was said to start that fight. So far, police say charges are pending against that 37-year-old man. Now, this is the story. Now, we finally got the story. And they're going to say, he, this, now, this is Darnell Scott. He's only 37. He's from Englewood. And, and they're going to say the start, st it started because the young man didn't say nothing to him passing each other this is a sad day because when you stab somebody just because he walked past you and didn't say nothing also they're also going to uh state say that um that the older man asked the younger one did you send somebody to jump on me and right here um they stated that um he, the, the younger guy sent somebody darnell now they're not releasing the brother-in-law's name he's married to your sister and you do this to him. You can't even fight. He should be facing murder. He's only faced an aggravated attempted, uh, aggravated uh, battery. And he should be attempted murder. Because um, his brother-in-law is in critical condition. Scott married a father of three. Will be able to seek reduced bond. Now that's bull. That's bull. He should definitely be getting... Um, Attempted murder. He's only uh, uh, charged with aggravated assault with bodily harm. And he's very lucky. He should be facing easy 25 years in jail with attempted murder. Um, this is what uh, another story uh, and what Trump had to say about Chicago and the state it's in. Take a look. It's an appropriate question. And Chicago is a disaster. It's a total disaster. The city of Chicago now close to recording its 600th homicide this year. Here to weigh in is Fox News contributor and former Trump Hispanic Advisory Council member Steve Cortez. Steve, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, when you look at the statistics here, I mean, the crime rate in Chicago is absolutely ridiculous. We're up to 581 shootings uh, through November 5th. That's right. 
2016, you can see 771, and then the list goes down from there. But do you think that the gun laws are, are going to solve this problem? Oh, gosh, no. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's sad. We're closing in on a, on a grim milestone here of 600 murders, which we're almost sure to hit, unfortunately, in Chicago. I think that Chicago, and I say this as a longtime Chicago resident, somebody who's raising a family in the city, uh, Chicago, unfortunately, it's a great city, uh, but it's being ruined, and it's become the encapsulation, really, of failed blue state policies, whether it's our failed educational system, our fiscal budget nightmare, or the most dangerous streets, as we're talking about, literally the most dangerous streets, probably in the developed world right here in Chicago. Chicago has incredibly strict gun control laws. It's extremely difficult to legally get a firearm here, but that certainly doesn't stop the criminals. Just as it didn't stop the criminal maniac in Sutherland in Texas, unfortunately, it doesn't stop people on the west side of Chicago either who have criminal intent. But Steve, you know, Democrats would argue from what I've read of their perspective is that they say that the gun laws in Chicago have actually gotten more lax in recent years. That you can, uh, that gun stores, they wanted to keep right. gun stores out of the city, now they're allowed back in. Do you, do you see any truth to that? Well, Rob, there is some truth. They have gotten slightly more lax. In other words, it used to be a, a, an almost complete prohibition on guns. Yeah. The city didn't... Uh, didn't. And, and, and this is the purpose. We're the laughing stock of the world, man. Everybody's looking at us. We can't even fight something as small as this. Y'all pass each other. Oh, you didn't talk to me. Let me stab you 50 times, 25 times. Can't even have a fist fight. It's not even safe on a CTA bus. People can't even ride the bus. This is why it's so important. It is a state of emergency. It's, it's very important that we unite and come together. That's why I say, and Chicago is one of the most segregated cities in the country. In fact, it is. It's number one. We're the most segregated. Um, and in our communities, it's no black businesses. Therefore, that's why most of our young brothers and sisters do not have a job. They're not working. It is poverty, and they got to hustle, sell drugs, get by, carry a gun, carry a weapon. You get into a minor fist fight, and it ends up deadly. That's what we're looking at in Chicago. Minor fist fight can end up deadly, and this is what we're teaching. People are being becoming more aggressive. It's normal to see a dead body and people shot down the street and the police picking them up, and this is the trauma that everybody's, and especially the Chicago public school system is so aggressive. You're gang banging and fighting at 10, 11 years old already. I have witnessed it. Gang banging, 10 years old, people fully gang banging, shooting, stabbing, killing at 10. All the way into gang banging at 10 years old and this is the trauma of all those years of trauma that we're growing up with and then this is the aggression we're seeing towards one another. We got all this pent up aggression for ourselves and nothing left for anybody else. It's the reality we face. This is the reality we are facing, uh, people. And this Loosen up though because they wanted to. It's because of federal lawsuits uh, trying to protect the Second Amendment rights of Chicagoans. So it is possible now to get a gun, but it's very onerous. You have to go through extensive training, extensive background checks. It's very expensive. Uh, and look, criminals simply don't do that. I mean, do you think, do you think that a gangbanger says, you know, I'm going to go to class, I'm going to do this the right <laughs> way and get a concealed carry permit? I mean, of course they don't. Uh, you know, I mean, that's, it, and it is really laughable to think so. Uh, but what isn't laughable is what's happening on the streets of Chicago. And kids, in many neighborhoods in this city literally can't go to the park to play or are worried going to and from school in the morning. Uh, this is a city, by the way, that has been controlled by Democrats almost 100%. The last Republican mayor here was in 1931. Wow. Uh, so I would put it to the Democrats uh, who completely control the city council and, as I said, have controlled the mayoralty for almost a century. Uh, what is it that you're doing that can make Chicago better? Uh, and, and how can you argue that you haven't failed miserably in in this city. But Steve, is it fair to say that Chicago is the problem when you look at other states around Chicago that have pretty weak gun laws, uh, specifically Wisconsin and Indiana? I mean, going back to the beginning of the segment when that reporter asked Donald Trump that question, it was about, do you think that we need better gun vetting, right. I think was what she said, yeah. to not exactly quote her, but what's your thought on that? Yeah. No, and listen, Jillian, that, that it is a valid point that certainly, yes, we have states that are far more pro-Second Amendment, I, I wouldn't say weak gun laws. Yeah, stop it. You know exactly what the problem is, where the guns are coming from. You can go to Indiana and they'll say you go to a gun show, you can buy 30 guns. 
They also dropping guns off. Just everybody, just in the alley, going the alley, crates of guns. They want us to kill each other. They're flooding the black communities with guns and drugs. Shoot, shoot and kill yourself. There's a there's a story in the Chicago Tribune today about um, they're bringing trolleys in to look at the areas in Inglewood. They're gonna gentrify that area. They're gonna what they're doing. What they're doing in uh, Inglewood is that uh, once all these people kill each other, their property value goes down. So now their property value, what you if you bought a house in Inglewood at hundred thousand, it's worth twenty thousand now. So they're gonna uh, buy those properties up, tear them down, move the poor out, and take back the city. It's easy. We've been seeing it. We know what's going on. You don't have to quit, quit asking. Oh, what's going on? What what's the problem, Mr. Scott? What are they doing? We know what's going on, and we're not stupid. Anyway, I want y'all to like, comment on this video. Let me know what you think about this video. Peace, peace, peace. Thank <laughs> you.